I'm back with another video. And if you're new here, hey, hello, how you doing? Comment down below. Let me know something about you, where you from. Um, if you're not new here, thank you so much for sticking. So I know y'all see my hair. So I know y'all see my hair. I already know what's going on. I'm taking my hair down. Um, I had these in for like three weeks. I put them in uh, right before New Year's Eve. I think like the day before or the day of. And yeah, the day before. And I did that live. So my hair been itching and it's time for them to come out. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As you can see by the side, I'm doing a story time. Probably my first story time. And I've been... Well, no, this is not my first story time. It's actually my second. Because this is a continuation of a story time. So, I got about... Well, I got like an hour and something for my children to come home. So, I got some quiet time. Shamari is asleep. But I'm going to go ahead and get into the story time. So like I said, this is a continuation of a story time. The first time I did the story time, I was so nervous. Like I was so new to YouTube and I might add like a clip of me telling it. It's my first video of 2020. First 2020 video. I'm so excited about 2020. I'm going to like it. Ow. <laughs> We had all this little stuff for the new year, and I just left a little bit, decorate the table. And, uh, they had little horns and the little tiara. So, we had fun with that the other day, but about to be back to business for my girls, back to school. All right, y'all, so this is um my first jail experience mukbang. I don't know if y'all gonna be able to tell if I was nervous, but I did it in a mug with a mukbang and I was nervous, y'all. I was nervous. So I did not get hardly none of the story out. So I'm gonna tell a whole story, okay? I'm not gonna make it too long though. So this is the story time of how I went to jail for the first time. Now, I'm gonna give y'all dates as much as best as I could date it. Um, I moved to Texas in 2019, but it was the end of 2019. I also started my YouTube channel at the end of 2019, October. Okay, so I moved to Texas in October of 2019. And that's when I started my channel as well. The very first videos I put up there was like from July 2019. So, you could kind of see the timeline of where I was or whatever. If you go back and see any of those little videos. They're like short videos. Um, I do have another one that's private. I might take that off of private one day, like for a week or something. <laughs> but, I don't know. I was looking a mess. But, um, so my daughter, my oldest daughter was in kindergarten. And, because she actually, we moved for like for her birthday, like a day before her birthday. And she was turning five. So she was in kindergarten and her birthday late. Her birthday is in is like in October. So you know she have to start everything late or whatever. So she uh and we live in like a small neighborhood called Napoleonville. I'm from New Orleans, but after Hurricane Katrina, and I might talk about that one day. I tried to make a video for y'all and I cried like a baby. So I did not post a video my Katrina story time. So uh my daughter was going to this school in Napoleonville. And uh, I actually went, like I was saying, I went to high school out there after the storm. So, and I also worked out there, like after I graduated college, because I did leave when I graduated high school. I went to college in New Orleans. And then I went back to Napoleonville. Um, my mama had a house out there. So I went by her. Then I got my own apartment and I went to work out there because I felt like, you know, I had my reasons why I wanted to work out there. So, I had my daughter out there. And plus, I got pregnant with her out there. And I was in a relationship. And I'm going to probably tell y'all about that too. How I ended up in this relationship. And getting married in a prison. So, if y'all want to know about that story, you know, leave me a comment. And I'll let y'all know about that as well. I'm going to see the best way to tell that story. Uh, but... Also, you know, because my daughter going to get to see this. And I don't just want to be sitting up here talking all crazy. Like, I don't know. But 
I'm going to get to that one day. So, anyways, I'm out there, and my baby was getting into stuff on the bus, but she quiet. She in kindergarten. Now, mind you, I had already had issues with this particular bus driver, and her bringing my daughter home late, like the bus was always late. One day, um, I think she was actually in pre-K at the time, and she dropped my daughter off at our old house. And it was already updated. Like, my daughter told her it was her old house. She don't stay down no more. The lady let off the bus. And my daughter came. Now, y'all, it's a small neighborhood. <laughs> and we was li literally, like, houses away from our old house. We was literally right around the corner. So, um, but that's not the point, you know. Thank God we was close because if we wasn't, then what? You know, so, like, also my daughter have... Um, her stepdad, her dad, her stepdad, you know, her, his nieces and stuff was on the bus. So, and I had been around those little girls since they was babies. So, you know, they look out for my daughter. You know, that's their cousin. So, they even on the bus telling her, like, no, she don't stay there or whatever, whatever. So, I'm hearing the kids hollering as the bus coming up. And I see my daughter walking. And I'm like, what? So, y'all, it was a bunch of stuff. Like, one day she called the police to my house. I'm driving looking for the bus. Because I had a call, but I was a big pregnant, y'all. I was big pregnant. So, that's really one of the reasons why my daughter caught the bus. It was just too much for me, you know, to be talking about. Then I had the baby. I had a baby. Riley was two. And then I'm big pregnant. So, it was a lot to try to get up, get a baby ready, pregnant. And I didn't have to. And the bus passed right there. So, it's like, I'm going to put her on a bus. The bus passed right in front of my house. So, uh, one day, the bus never showed up. So, I just drove to the school because I'm figuring something happened. You know, she missed the bus, whatever the case may be. She, she probably at the school because that happened before and she ended up being at the school. So, uh, y'all was just crazy. There was so much going on with this bus. So, she called the police to my house. As I'm pulling up, looking for the bus. She, the police at the house l looking for me. But this not even the situation how I end up going to jail. All of this led up to me being like a pissed off parent. Like I'm highly upset with her at this point, right? So, uh, we moved again. <laughs> we moved again. And again, we was very close to where we stayed. It's a super small town. But we moved again for certain different reasons or whatever the case may be. And uh, the bus still just still had a funny schedule. Now, the school let out at like 2.45, 2.30. The bus supposed to make it to my house by, we stayed right down the street from the school. I could walk to the school in like seven minutes. Um, The bus supposed to make it to me at like 3.15, 3.30 at the latest. It was getting to me at 4, 15, 4, 25, 4, 30. This particular day, the bus didn't get there till 4, 45, yo, with my kindergartner. She's a kindergartner at this point. So I'm worried because I know she hides. The bus is down there, didn't have no air. I know she had tired, hungry, thirsty. You know what I'm saying? And I know the kids on the bus acting a fool. Because my daughter had already told me, like, when the children be bad on a bus, the bus driver would threaten to call the police. All right, so I just wanted to make sure I was still recording. So, she already had told me, like, the bus driver used to be threatening to call the police on the students. And, uh... She would stop the bus for long periods of time if they was acting up. And, you know, if y'all don't know, <laughs> y'all know kids, but Louisiana kids is different. If you threaten to do something, do it. You know, they're going to force your hand. They're going to make you not want to move your bus. They're not about to take that. Especially these children. <laughs> and it's not funny. It's not funny at all because I done had many of these where I used to be fussing at the churn from my porch. Like, y'all better stop all that. Because I knew half of them. And then I was a substitute teacher, yo. I did a few things. So, I'm like, y'all better calm down, you know. And, uh. So, 
She comes at 4.45. And I'm heated. Mind you, I had my new, bo I had my baby by this time. Did I? Yeah, I had my baby by this time. So, I got this newborn baby. I'm already on age. You know, y'all go, we go through different changes emotionally. But so much stuff hasn't already happened. And, uh... I was already just ready to tell her something. You know, I was ready to tell her something. I was, what, 27? That was like 27, 28. And I should have known better. Well, I'm almost done, yo. I should have known better. And I should have handled it differently. Which I did. No, let me tell y'all. Before all it, let me tell y'all. Before all of this happened, I went to the school board. I knew the school board. I worked for the school board. I've been in the school board. I done been in trouble in the school board. You know, the same people there. I know the person who is over the uh, transportation. Like, anybody from that area could comment and vouch for this. We all know these people. And we already know what these people is about. This is another reason why we had to go. So, whew, child. She pulled up in that bus at about 4.45. I was sitting on the lawn in the lawn chair. Ready to go off. <laughs> Yo. I was mad. And I, you know. So I got, I went to go meet her at the bus. And asked her like, what's going on? Why are you so late every day? And she said whatever. I think I woke my baby up. I was talking too loud. So, uh, you know, she said whatever she said with an attitude, and I said whatever I said with an attitude. One thing led to another, y'all. She called the police on me. Like, I didn't hit her. I just was, I went off on her. Oh, I threw her purse. I took her purse. I don't know what made me pick up her purse, but it, it just was everything for me not to put my hands on her. Yeah, I woke Shamari up. Y'all don't mind Shamari is fully dressed, hat, <laughs> jacket, and mask. Because that's just what she been doing lately. Tennis shoes and all. But we did go outside. If y'all don't follow me on Facebook, follow me on Facebook. Um, and watch my reels. Help me get my coins. So, um, she on that from today. But, so... We got inside with a little scuffle. I didn't want to put my hands on her because I know one thing, you know. I knew she was going to call the police just for me stepping on her bus. So, I'm like, don't make no sense to put my hands on her and really make matters worse. I want to give my So, uh... I want to give my Okay, I'm going to get it. So, she called the police. She was like, I'm calling the police. And I'm like, great. Perfect. Call them. You know, Whatever. And I'll wait for him. So I went and sat over there, you know, sent my daughter in the house. And so, you know, I sent my daughter in the house and I went sat down and wait for the police to come. So less than like five minutes, police station is right there. Yo, small town. Police station right around the corner. So the police pulls up and it, it was like three or four of them. It was like two or three cars. It was way too much for this, right? But they pulls up deep or whatever, and they go talk to her. Then somebody come talk to me, so I'm telling them like all of the stuff that don't matter to them. Basically, you know, she don't bring my. Mommy, sorry. You sorry? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you do do what do uh out there with water. Uh, what with milk? She telling on everybody. So, uh, you know, everything that don't matter to them. She bring my daughter home late. She disrespectful. She then did this. She did that. My daughter don't like catching a bus no more. This, that, and the third. I reported her. They don't want to hear none of that. All they care about is the fact down. that I stepped on a bus and I threw her purse, her belongings. Uh, but she's down. Yeah. So... Another person came and asked me the same thing. I told him the same thing. And you could tell he the one that put the handcuffs on. He walked up like he was ready to put the handcuffs on. What? 
this man basically asked me what happened, cut me off mid sentence, and was like, "No, you know what? You going to jail." Mm-hmm. Now, yo, I still didn't go to jail this day. Stay tuned. Y'all about to really hear like this is serious. This is crazy. I'm about to do a part two because I really want y'all to know how it was when I went to jail. But I'm telling y'all, this is leading up to jail. All right, I'm still in Louisiana. I went to jail in Texas. I'm going to tell y'all that now. I went to jail way in Texas. Okay. So, he took and uh, handcuffed me. He brought me to my door. First of all, my kids was inside. My man was inside. He brought me to the door in front of all my children. It was like, let them know you leaving. Let them know you leaving. Or whatever. Basically, say bye. You know? So... I uh say bye, walked off, handcuffed, bye. got in the vehicle, and bye. oh, this is not oh so. All right, yeah. So I say bye, got in the vehicle, pull off, and we went to make a turnaround because it's very small streets, very small streets, yo. So we went to make this little turnaround, and the bus bye. made a turnaround. Bye. So apparently. The police asked uh, her why was she so uh, late bringing my daughter uh, home from school. Yeah. And she told them because the street that we moved on is too small to turn around. Right? So she decided to bring my daughter home last because she can't make the turn around. But she still have a spot where she could turn around there and on another street. So I, I that didn't make sense to me. And it didn't make sense to the police either because they saw her turn around at the turnaround. Not the street, at the turnaround that was made. Because I'm telling them, the, they had a new, I forgot to say that. And I don't think they asked me that, though. They didn't tell me that until I got in the call. And he was like, is this the new turnaround that was just made back here? And I'm like, yes, sir. You're not mad, but I'm respectful. I'm like, yes, sir. Why? I ain't seen why I just was like, yes, that's the that's the turnaround. Or did he? T- I don't know, but <laughs> I'm like, yes, that's the turnaround. He was like, well, she told me the reason why she bring your daughter home late is because she can't turn her bus around and make her her route quick enough. Like basically, it takes too much time to drive my daughter on on time, so she drop her off late. Sorry. And I'm like, I that's what sorry. she told you. He was like, yeah, but sorry. she making a turnaround. I sorry. Yeah, you okay, baby? You didn't do anything. So he was I like, you know what? I'm gonna let you go home because she lied to me. Period. And that's how I end up not going to jail down there. Uh, right? Please. So, I still had to go to the station uh, because I was already in the car. I was already handcuffed. I still had to go sit over there and wait. Mama, I didn't go inside mommy, of any, like, cell or anything. I didn't go in a holding cell. They did handcuff me to, like, a bench. And it's all very degrading, y'all, because I was yeah. simply, you know, being a parent for weeks. Pregnant. Oh, I mean, for weeks. I'm really a year because this started with her in prison. And I'm just being a good parent, looking out for my daughter. My daughter wasn't even in first, second grade yet. Like, she just loved catching the bus and loved catching the bus with her cousins. And she just loved doing those things. And it was only a 10-minute ride, 15-minute ride for her. So, you know, it wasn't that bad for me to put her on the bus. Even now, Riley catch the bus and Riley is four. And she have a sister, though. But Leah used to do it, you know, by herself but with her cousins. So she, they loved it. You know, I thought Riley was going to have a problem catching up us now, but she don't. So, uh, I'm just like, it was very sad for me to have to go through that. But I was so grateful that I didn't have to go to jail. And, uh, at that moment, like, I was able to go back home. Like, they didn't know what they was going to do. My baby. Huh? She's Shamari is two. That happened in 2019. It's 2022. She made three this year. Shamari was, we moved out here. Shamari was six months. So Shamari had to be like four months, five months at the time. And, you know, my husband got a four month old, a two year old, and a 
six, a five year old turning six. Bruh. Like he looking like, yeah. what I'm about to do? How I'm about to go to work? Like what I'm about to do with these kids? Like he was panicking. Like I could see the panic on his face, y'all, when I left the house. I was just so grateful that I was able to go back yeah. home to them. They didn't even know I was coming back, but well, inside I call, I did call because he had to come pick me up. But um. Yo, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was so sad for somebody to do something like that when she could have just, you know, communicated with me as a parent, as an adult. You know, she could have... Yeah. That could have went so so much better than what it did. Like, because obviously, we was going tit for tat for months. Really, she was going tit for tat, and I was just a, a standby, uh, innocent bystander. That was trying to get her to, uh, you know, act appropriately. And that's just how they are, you know. That's just how people are in some areas, some states, and especially small towns like that. So, that's one of the reasons why we left, y'all. Um, because it was just too much pettiness. It was, it was really bigger than that alone. So, anyways, let me finish the story off with this point. So, I got a court date. And I didn't really realize I had a court date. I don't know how any of that goes. I didn't even remember. You know, I was just happy to go home. Like, I blacked out when they told me I could go home. After that, I just was ready to sign the papers and leave. Right? So, I didn't realize I had to go to court for that. And I ended up missing my court date. I ended up missing my court date because that happened in 2019, uh, like September, and we drastically moved. Like, we didn't plan to move. We had talked about it, but we didn't know when we were actually going to do it. But when just one day we started talking about it, then we made a couple plans. We set some stuff up. What? Like... We drastically moved. Like, we went from talking about moving to making a few plans to gone, right? And I didn't realize I had to go to court. And then somebody Uh, called uh, me. No, somebody inboxed me and was like, I went to court today and they called your name. I'm like, my name? (laughs) And I had a warrant out for my arrest for missing court, y'all. I had a warrant out for missing court. So, then, once they found out I was in another state, it said, uh, like, a fugitive. I was listed as a fugitive, yo. It was so crazy. Mom, Yeah. It was so crazy. I was listed as a fugitive. So, go to y'all court dates, okay? Make them court dates. Don't go to jail for nothing stupid. That's just dumb. So, I might as well just tell y'all how I went to jail. I ended up going to the store one night. We was going, like, to McDonald's to the dollar store. My husband got out here, and he got his second job. He got his first paycheck. And y'all know the first paychecks be exciting. We was happy. We was in our apartment. He got his first paycheck. And we had been playing that check all week. Like, we treating the kids to McDonald's. (laughs) We going to this. We going Go get it. Did. Okay, hold on. So, we was like, you know, we doing A, B, C, D, said that we gonna do this or whatever, then we gonna pay bills and we gonna chill. Child, I got up. When he got that check, we went cash the check. So much stuff happened that day, too. Like, his check got wet. It almost got ripped. We almost had to get a new check, I believe. That was that same day. We ended up re- getting, being able to cash it at the gas station and got the money. It was just too much. It was like everything telling us to stay home. And I go drive the car by myself because he was like, well, I'm going to go home now and, you know, take a bath because he don't like to be dirty like that. He was working at Santa's at um, Chicken Factory and he was like packaging raw chicken you know so he was like well i'm about to go home take a bath y'all can go get that and come right back home and it was like 7 30 at night and uh i made like a wrong turn yo i made like a wrong turn and no i made the right turn the wrong way 
and I didn't realize it because I was still new here. It was only like two months we had been here. Mom. And I just was, you know, learning how to get around. And, yo, the police was coming right as I'm doing this. And the kids in the car, like, making noise and all kind of foolishness. And I got pulled over. Wow. I got pulled over. I didn't have no license. My license was suspended. I got a ticket for that. Wow. Well, not a ticket. I didn't even get no tickets. You know, I just went wow. to jail, but I didn't get no tickets. I had wow. got pulled over for no license. My kids wasn't strapped in right because they was trying to take yeah. themselves out the seat belts. Um, and I had a warrant for my arrest as a fugitive. So they was actually trying to ship me back to Louisiana. It was a lie. They were trying to take my kids from me. They were telling me that if my husband didn't get there in like this second, they put my children in foster care. It was a lie show. When I tell y'all, I cried. I cried like a baby. You hear me? I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. I'm not talking about you. I'm not a baby. Yo, this one all the same. I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. Yo, I cried I'm so not. hard when the people was telling I'm me all of this. Because I'm just so excited. I'm like, it's matter of fact, it was December 25th. No, look at me. It wasn't Christmas. It was like December 26th or 27th. Because I went in for three days and then I came home and the next day it was December 31st. So, y'all could do the math on that. But it was a few days before New Year's Eve, y'all. And I'm like, this is not how I'm about to bring in my new year in a new state. Like, mm-hmm. are you serious, Dennis? Because of something that happened in Louisiana. Y'all could just imagine my anger for Louisiana. I was highly upset all over again. Because this is one of the reasons why we left. Because of the ratchetness. You know what I'm saying? And it done follow me. And I'm like, I know I'm meant to be here. There's nothing that's going to make me feel like I'm not meant to be where I'm at doing what I'm doing. I was starting my YouTube channel already. So, oh, yo, wow. long story short, he made it. Hey. He got the kids. We didn't know nobody out here. Nobody to come get our kids. He And I had the call. Thank God it's kind of small in this area where we were or where we are. Where I went is what I'm trying to say. The store I went to was close. And uh, he was able to walk. He made it up here so fast, baby. Y'all know a nigga know how to walk. Okay, if he don't know how to do nothing, he can walk. And that was before his injury. So he made it up so fast, y'all. No questions asked, of course. You know, that's his kids. So he walked up there. He came and got the kids. And uh, the police drove my car because he didn't have a license. So thank God they let that go down. You know, the police drove him and my children home, and that was a lot for my kids to go through. My kids was crying. You know, all three of us in the back seat, and they didn't know what was going on. They couldn't understand it. And, uh, you know, I made a, fo- a post on Facebook before they took my phone. I called one of my friends, and I told her to, like, reach out to whoever she could reach out to. And I think I called my little sister, and I went to jail, yo. I went to jail way out here, and they was just telling me, like, when I first got there. Let me see how long this is. All right, so I got booked. So, you know, he picked them up. They went home, and I went to jail. And that's why I'm in this video, at because I just wanted to tell y'all how I went to jail, and it's already 30 minutes, and I'm going to most likely use the whole 30 minutes. Whew. I don't want to make it too long. But I'm about to start recording part two. Right now, I'm going to just get that part over with. And I'll probably drop these in the same week. And yeah, y'all. So, you know, for anybody who watched this that's in their early 20s, even if you're in your early 30s, because our temper still be at the same level, if not worse. You know, you know, when you have a situation, you know, when you have a situation that you go through with your child and her, and the people at the school, like, try your best to go take all of the steps. Even if it's a child bullying your child on a bus or something like that, like, don't just go jumping on these people buses, going off. Because I, I really, like, the way I got out of that situation, 
was really a blessing for her to make that turnaround. Like, if she wouldn't have made that turnaround right there, I was going to jail for for disturbing the peace. And uh, something about her property, disruption of property. And then I'm on her school bus. And it's a school bus, you know. And even though no students was on there, it still hold the same weight as if students was on there and my daughter was right there. So... You know, we do I have we do have to be mindful of our temple in situations like that, no matter what the the reason is behind it, no matter how angry you are, because within seconds your life could change. You know, your life could really, really change. And look how that happened. I got away and still had to go to jail. Still had to go to jail. Because I miss court. So if you do get off and you get a court date, go to that court date. If you got to walk, if you got to catch the bus, if you have to ask a person that you don't want to ask, you might not want that person in your business. You 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 know, we have pride as women. We might be so prideful. We don't want to ask this person or that person or whatever the case may be. But you have to. You know, you got to, uh, you got to take care of your business. Basically, you got to take care of your business. You got to take care of your children and they come first. You know, mess in the streets. They go along with that too. People calling the police these days. These days, people doing, they doing more than fighting. So, I just see so much going on and I trying to get this one little thing out. <laughs> I'm going to do this afterwards. But I see so much going on and I really just... Be wanting to be that person to be like, I saw this happen. I saw that happen. I did a few things, not too much because I always was still focused on like the end goal. But I had slip ups and it's not worth it. You got to work too much harder. Like you got to work 10 times harder to come back from um them slip ups. So just, you know, stay focused and stay calm and... Do what you got to do. Because ain't nobody going to do it for you. And that's period. So, I hope y'all enjoyed that story time. I'm about to record part two. And um, that is going to be just telling y'all my experience in jail. So, that's crazy. Like, my experience in jail. I'm going to tell y'all how long I had to stay in jail. Um, and all of that good stuff. So, Stay tuned for part two. Come back, hit the notification bell, like, comment, subscribe. And you can share this video anywhere with anybody. I'm not, uh, I don't feel no type of way. Like, I'm not ashamed of what happened because I was trying to help my daughter. And even if it was something serious, I still would be ashamed because I made it through. And I'm here to share it with y'all. So, you know, maybe I can help somebody not make the same mistake. So, see y'all in the next video. Bye.